Good Morning Wilmington is powered by DART, Delaware's transit service, moving forward. Good morning, Wilmington. Good morning, Wilmington. I say good morning, Wilmington. Wake up, y'all. Come on, have a great day. Good morning, Wilmington. What's going on? It's your main man, Big Ivy, the talk of the town, Mr. DTV, here with my lovely co-host. Vincenza, good morning, Wilmington, and good morning, Ivan. Good morning. Good morning <laughs> to you at home. Thanks for joining us on this wonderful day. April 8th, April showers. Spring May flowers. Oh. I am. I want to forget last week's weather because it just rained every single day. Typhoon, if it you really will. It really was. It was just a monsoon. I, yeah. I, I, nobody, nobody was happy last week with the weather, but that's okay because, like we said, April showers bring May flowers, right. and we we need a little bit of rain to make room for the sunshine. Yeah. But speaking of sunshine, there's some weather in, well, interesting weather topics of today. The solar eclipse. Eclipse. Oh God, is that time? Yes, ah, yes. Ah, wow. I think the last time there was a solar eclipse, I was reading up on it. I think it was a, a seven years, I think. Yeah. Um, but uh, I was, I dived into a little bit more research with the solar eclipse. So okay. I have some, some facts for you. Right. So, do you remember when we had Alicia Barnett, the owner of Terra Luna yeah. Metaphysical Boutique? Yeah. Yes. I think it was three weeks ago we had her on the show. Check out that segment. Mm -hmm. She was able to provide some insight about the solar eclipse. Did she? Uh, I'm like, what better person than to reach okay. out to Alicia from Terra Luna okay. Metaphysical Boutique, which is located on Philadelphia Pike. Uh, make sure you check that out. All right. And she gave me some really great information about the solar eclipse that I thought it was uh, something worth highlighting. Okay. So it's a time for reset. It's a time for a, you know, reset your intentions. Okay. Jumpstart something new, stepping into a new you. Yeah. So I, like I, I love that. I love, I love that, it. right? Yeah. Are you, are you hitting your reset? Oh, 100%. <laughs> as soon as she told me, I said, I needed that. Right. I really, really need a reset, even just for my health. Oh God! I yes. felt that I, I felt that I kind of derailed a little bit taking care of my health. Mm -hmm. um, I am usually pretty good. You know me, yeah. Evan. I'm yeah. usually very yeah. disciplined. I'm usually pretty good, but I felt that I derailed a little bit. So, mm -hmm. I when she gave you know when I received this information from her, I was immediately I was like, oh my goodness, this is what I need. Yeah. I reset and reset and jumpstart into something new and with the new moon stepping into a new you. Right. I was all about this. So thank you to Alicia. Definitely check. Um, out her metaphysical boutique. You can also visit her website at terralunade.com. But check out the interview. I, right. She was on the show three weeks ago. It was a ago. beautiful it was, interview. It was a great interview here on Good Morning Wilmington. It was really, really um, insightful, mm -hmm. very informative. But we learned so much about crystals and about sound baths. Yeah. And, oh, God, and, I'm supposed to right? do that, Remember right? Remember that? I, I, I forgot. Right? I'll be over to do that. Right? I'll, I'll right? be over. But she offers all of this great information at her boutique. And yeah. it's a metaphysical boutique, which is yeah. really neat. Um, but she offers all of this great resources and information. But it really was... It made sense because I was like, what better person to reach out to than uh, Leisha because of the solar eclipse. Right. And I know that. Um, Are you ready? I am so ready for the solar eclipse. <laughs> oh, oh you there think? you go. Oh, my God. I love what do you it. Think? I love the glasses. Yeah. I love it. But, yeah. but, but, no, 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 but no, then, no, no, no. come on. I know. That's not fashion me. ready. This is me. Th this is Please. Vin. Okay. All right. Oh. <laughs> now, look. Um, at the and I want to at the Brandywine Creek Park, State Park mm -hmm. um, for to see this solar this solar eclipse. Mm -hmm. um, Delaware, you'll be. We are actually going to have a partial uh, solar eclipse, and mm -hmm. uh, it should start around about three fifteen, right? Well, I think that they say that you're supposed to wear proper sunglasses or sunwear. Don't look directly into right. the sun. Right. Right. My advice is just be mindful. Um, and if you want to check it out, I th they, what was the time frame again? Uh, 3.15. 3.15, exactly, 3.15. Yeah. Okay, so I know everywhere is different. Um, the Philadelphia area, they were saying around 
two-ish, but um, check, I'm sure if you uh, research it, you can find out more information exactly when the solar eclipse is taking place. I bet you yeah. there'll be so many people outside today. And if you don't have glasses, visit go to visitdelaware.com mm -hmm. and register and get your free glasses. Mm -hmm. They're going to have it down at the um, Brandywine, um, the Brandywine Creek mm -hmm. Park and a park in the Cape and Lopen Park. So yes. make sure you check that out. State Park down in Cape. In, down in Cape. Make sure you check that out. Visit um, visitdelaware.com to register and to get free glasses yes. if you don't have glasses like Vincenza yes. every day I, of the week. I have week, my, so, you know. my options, right. but, but be mindful that you, you know, protect your eyes, protect right. your health. And if you don't feel comfortable going outside and watching the solar eclipse with the proper um, sun wear or eyeglass wear, mm -hmm. um, and if you do inside, it, stay inside and, and set your intentions, you it, know, for the new you yeah. and jumpstart and reset. And if you really want to watch something bright, it's pageant time. Oh, yeah. So, Look, Ivan, he, 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 right? he is on it's it. pageant time. He is so on it. Ivan is so busy. <laughs> he has, like, his life is is chaos, but it's organized Organized chaos. chaos. It's very organized chaos. But he's so busy, but he never forgets. It's and I appreciate time. that no. about you. Never forget. It is pageant time. Yeah. Yes, the 2024 Miss Delaware USA and Miss Delaware Teen USA pageant is coming up on Sunday, April 28th at the Layered Performing Arts Center at the Tattnall School. So if you're interested in attending, mm -hmm. visit MissDelawareUSA.com. Click the tab that says tickets for all of the information, how you can purchase your tickets at the door only. Or if you cannot attend in person, you can stream the pageant live right, right from the comfort of your own home. We oh, partnered wow. with PageantVision.com. So shout out to PageantVision.com. So yes, we'll be streaming the Miss Delaware USA, Miss Delaware oh. Teen USA pageant live for the world to see. We need to talk to them because maybe we mm -hmm. can take the stream and play it on TV so local Delawareans can see it I as well. I think that's a great idea. I All think right. that's a great idea, but definitely check us out and uh, please come support the dynamic mm. women competing for the titles of Miss Delaware USA, wow. Miss Delaware Teen USA. It really is going to be a great production, great show, and a shout out to all the sponsors that are partnering and supporting the organization. And mm -hmm. we are always still looking for sponsorship. So please visit MissDelawareUSA.com if you're interesting, interested in supporting the cause. We're always open, always looking for new um, partnerships. But ch come check us out. Come support the dynamic women competing for those titles. Uh, we just had our pageant orientation yesterday. How many women you have? Oh, uh, we have a little over 25. Okay. I think about 25. Yeah. We have 25 um, dynamic, talented, incredible, accomplished women vying for the titles of Miss Delaware USA, Miss Delaware Teen USA. And it was really great oh, to wow. connect with each and every one of them yesterday at the 2024 pageant orientation. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're ready. They're well, ready. Now was the Very former, uh, was the former Miss yes. um, uh, Delaware there? Mm -hmm. Miss Delaware USA, Noah Mills and Miss Delaware Teen USA, Molly Lavelle, which you yeah, met. They yeah. were on the show oh, here God. at Good Morning Wilmington. And uh, they were, they're just so, I'm so proud of them. I call them my adopted daughters. Right, right. Because I, I feel like their mom that, you know, they've grown, they've they've just blossomed into such, I mean, they were already so amazing mm -hmm. when they won their titles, but just how to watch and witness their journey right. throughout their reign. It's been truly special to me as the director, but also extremely rewarding. And that's why I do it. Yeah. Because it, it, they inspire me. Nice. That's what it comes down to. They how, really inspire me. How old were you when you first got into pageantry? So I, I did. I never planned right. to enter a pageant when I was about. I think it was 15 years old. I think it was about 15 years old okay. when I entered the Miss Delaware Teen USA pageant many, mm. many, many years ago. Uh -huh. But I never planned to do a pageant when I was growing up. I was a. I was a, actually I was a tomboy growing up. And I loved sports. Right. I I was I was into soccer. I was into the swim team every year. I was I was more of a tomboy. Right. I did um, participate in the performing arts as far as like dance with ballet, tap, jazz, and hip hop. But I never ever set out to do a pageant right. ever. It right. wasn't like my mom did it. It wasn't it wasn't like okay when I grow up I want to be Miss Delaware USA. Mm -hmm. But but you end up being Miss Delaware it, it, USA. It, just kinda, it happened. And I took the chance. Right. And this is the biggest piece of advice I give anyone that may be interested in entering the, the pageant is try something new and different. And that's what I did. I stepped out of my comfort zone. I took a risk and I tried something new and different. And wow. Nice. It was the best decision. Changed your life? I, it changed my life forever. I wouldn't be here yeah. on television wow. having the confidence to speak 
just without a script, any notes or anything, right. there's no, you know, just being having that confidence. It it helped me develop self-esteem, confidence, communication skills, public mm. speaking skills, wow. and also it opened up a network of people that I've never would meet and mm. the friendships. The so, sisterhood, that's really what it's all about. The, my, I've made the bestest of friends mm -hmm. in all the pageants I competed in, still to this day, that I reach out for advice, help, and support. Yeah, so it's easy to say that you would recommend women, to, young women, to get involved in pageantry. Absolutely. Because it's more than mm -hmm. just being Miss Delaware or Miss USA, mm -hmm. it's about the journey. Yes, thank oh. you. It is about the journey versus the destination. I love it, I love mm -hmm. it, I love it. Uh, well, anyway, enough about me. How are you? What's been, what have you been up to? Oh. How was your weekend? How was your week? How was your Easter? Every, everything <laughs> Everything happened so fast. It did, it did. <laughs> First, um, um, Delaware Dancing with the Stars. Oh, you went? I went. Oh, that tell, was, tell us about it. The Wilmington Public Library hosted its fourth annual, if I'm not mistaken, um, Dancing with the Stars. It was a mm. beautiful event. It was held at the, um, the, the, the waterfall, waterfall, yep. waterfall off, on, um, in Claymont, mm -hmm. and it was standing room only. It wow. was amazing. Uh, another, th those two guys over there, Jamal and, and, um, and Carl, are doing wonderful things with the Wilmington Public Library. The they winners really of it was Ashley, it was Tiffany Christopher, excuse me, and my man Ryan out of the mayor's office. Um, yo, they, they, it was so. It was eleven couples. It was just so amazing. <laughs> Make sure you go over to WilmingtonPublicLibrary.org, I believe, and check out mm -hmm. um, the video. It was, it was, at your glasses. <laughs> it was, uh, she's ready, she's, she's still gonna get them for the, um, them the eclipse. But um, WilmingtonPublicLibrary.org, make sure you check it out. It was an amazing event, an awesome fundraiser. Um, and, and I think you saw it before, Vincenza, a lot of people come to the Wilmington Public Library, a lot of celebrities. Yes. They bring a lot of celebrities. I, I'm impressed with the the, the A-list yeah, celebrities that. Yeah. that attend the these events that are organized by the Wilmington Public Library, and it's Nonstop. Every yeah. single month, there's an A-lister, yeah. a celebrity, an influential person in the community yep. that is being highlighted, whether it's for a panel discussion mm -hmm. or for a presentation book, or just a book a, signing. A, book signing. Um, I know that, again, Dolly Parton. I mean, what more famous yeah. person? Dolly Parton was at the Wilmington Public Library promoting her nonprofit literacy organization, which hits home, hits home for me, yeah. being you know an advocate for promoting literacy. And that was really great that she was able to come to Delaware, Wilmington, Delaware, promote mm -hmm. her nonprofit, but also just make that appearance and yeah. be present. And I yeah. love that about her, that she's still present, she's still relevant, she's still continuing to um, continue the conversation of the, um, the importance of reading. But the Wilmington Public Library does that. You know, they they bring influential leaders that are making a difference yeah. in the community. They All have day. a purpose. Yeah. It's not just bring a celebrity for bring you know for no reason. Mm -hmm. There's a more than just you know bringing a celebrity to the Wilmington Public Library for autographs. Yeah. They have a purpose. It's all about community with them. Exactly. It's all community about community involvement. Yeah. And you know it. That's that's the best part about it. It's very intentional what they're doing yeah. there. So and make I sure think you that's, check. That's key. Yeah. Make sure you check Wilmington mm -hmm. Public Library out mm -hmm. doing great things. Um, outside of that, it was that crazy rain. Um, and then what the else? Blue coats. Oh, blue the blue coats. coats. Did you? I don't. I, I'm like. Did you, I'm asking our audience. Did you see? <laughs> <She's so excited. laughs> did you see us? Did you see us? It was so much fun. Okay, so shout out to Coach Joe. Thank you, Coach Joe, for inviting us. It we really. It was an honor to be present. It was an honor to see the beautiful facility. Yeah. The um. The. I mean. It was dope. The 76ers Field House. The Chase Field House was. Absolutely incredible, beautiful facility. First time there, wasn't it? First time. Wow. First time. I was blown away with how spectacular the facility was. Yeah. And everybody there, all of the vendors, all of the the, the, the people, people working the there. And it was it was it was school day or it was education day. Yeah. It was education day. Yeah. So there must have been like twenty schools. Yeah. There. So the audience was filled with um, students cheering mascots. and screaming and the mascots, Cody. But you gotta um, tell them what we did, Vin. Okay, so we had the honor. We were actually dubbed 
what is it, dignitaries? Dignitaries. <laughs> yeah, I felt so o- Only dignitaries do this. Only dignitaries do this. So we had the honor of presenting the game ball to the referee. Yeah, the start the game. And only dignitaries do that. So yeah. we felt so special <laughs> when they when they when the organizer came over to us and told us what we were doing. We looked at each other. We were like, like, oh, oh dignitaries. Uh, okay. okay. <laughs> I think uh, I think we made it. Yeah, we made it, Mom. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, but it was really special to be able to present the game ball and yeah. to um, be a part of that uh, that's you know that event itself obviously promoting education yeah. and celebrating education and they had so many great participating vendors there I mean we saw a few people actually quite a few people that we know that mm-hmm. we've had on the show promoting what you know what they're doing in the community but it really was a great event it was amazing we, we had the VIP treatment yeah. we were in the VIP box seats and we yeah. had we were we had lunch it was it was, it was great everything. Oh, and, and they I rolled you, out the red carpet thank yeah. you coach Joe and everybody at at the uh, 76ers Field House. Yeah, what was so dope about that, um, Vincenza, is it's a family-oriented atmosphere, yes. right? So mm-hmm. if you've never been to a, a Blue Coats, I will tell you what, go check it mm-hmm. out. Tickets are beyond reasonable for you to enjoy yourself with your family. It is family fun all the way, yes. from the players to the mascot, Cody, running around taking pictures <laughs> yeah, and giving right. out free pizza. Um, you will not miss it. it. And I think season, actually, the season is over mm-hmm. for the Blue Coats. They mm-hmm. lost, and they're, oh. they're going to right there, right there, the video right there. <laughs> Look, oh my gosh, and it's That's great. Hiccup. I love it's, it. it's boomerang. I love it. I love it. Look at that. That's so great. That was that was a, a just a little glimpse of what yeah. the experience was like. But yes, the season has ended. The ended. But check out the the when will this when when does the twenty twenty five well I guess you would say when does the October. new season so October. October yeah so check out I'm sure if you visit um, the website for more information on Delaware Blue Coats mm-hmm. you can check out when the season will start back up again so you can purchase your tickets mm-hmm. you can support you can attend as a family because it is a family oh, a, a, you know friendly event yeah it really is i mean uh, there was cotton candy there was popcorn hot dogs they were i mean they had everything they had games they had giveaways yeah. i love that ray was there ray hancock he was yeah. the m um, the yeah. event host yep he was great with just getting the energy going yeah, awesome. uh, for the event himself he, he's been on the show before yeah. and then obviously the mascot cody right i mean he's always so amazing and then the dj because the yeah. music was spot on spot on so a shout out to dj andrew Yo, in your one, He's so. a, yeah, you saw that. I saw it. I saw it. Yeah, I saw it. I saw it. I look up Vin over there scratch. I said, wait a minute, hold on. So DJ Andrew Hugh is the um, the DJ for the Delaware Blue Coats, and he's a good friend of mine. Okay, I've I've watched him grow in his career over the years, the years because he would go to different um, bars and uh, locations throughout mm-hmm. the state of Delaware, and he would play. And uh, you know, you just you know, you like you love to see someone thrive in their right. career. Right. Right. And we're all we all have goals. We all have you know our personal goals that we're working hard towards. So it's been really special to see DJ Andrew Hugh thrive in his career yeah. and to be able to see him there doing his thing because he's so talented and yeah. great. So it was it was really great great event so honored to be invited i'm yeah. so you know thankful that i was able to finally visit the facility so mm-hmm. um i have another idea okay i have another idea Shoot. i think we should go to the blue rocks yo game. yes because the they just started up they yeah just started up for season the season. Pre- season opener yep they just was this started weekend up for the season yeah um i have a friend that works there and i and i know that they uh they're gearing up for the season they're really excited and i was like oh you know ivan we should go to a blue rocks game i am at the blue rocks stadium right here in wilmington Delaware. It's a really beautiful facility. If you love baseball, I'm a baseball lover. So Are you? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I used to play t-ball. Remember, tomboy? <laughs> I used to play t-ball. Yeah, I used to do a lot of sports back in back in the day. <laughs> Nobody would ever think. Nobody would ever think of that. But um, yeah, no, it's Blue Rocks. I mean, we definitely should check it out. All right, I'm going there. And while we're checking out, we need to check out this coming Thursday. Um, Tatno is having a guest bartender event at oh. BCC. Are you the guest BBC. bartender? BBC. BBC. No. No, no. No. Okay. No. <laughs> They just send me stuff that I, I just post. Make sure you check it out this Thursday, April 11th, from 6 o'clock to 9 p.m. at BBC Tavern and Grill. Up in Hoke. Is that Hoke? Is that, that's Hoke. That is actually in Greenville. Greenville. BBC Tavern and Grill is in Greenville. I, I know because I went to high school at AI High School, which mm-hmm. is right across the street. So I'm very familiar with that area. And they usually, actually, BBC Tavern is known for having multiple guest bartending events. They all, they, they're I, like the go to spot. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And yep. the food Fun, is good too. Fundraisers, guest bartending events. Events, that's what they're known for. I participated in one. I think it was, 
oh gosh, this one must have been like seven years ago, I participated in a guest bartending event there because they regularly have that. And right. the way that they're set up, it makes sense to have an event yeah. there, the way it's set up. And it's a really great, you know, casual dining, uh, family friendly, but it's really great to hang out. Mm -hmm. I've been uh, promoting the guest bartending. What is it? Thursday, April 11th. Thursday, Put that flyer up one more time then. This Thursday, April 11th. Yep. Boom. Mm -hmm. There you go. Can't, you can't miss it. It's, a, it's a, just a good event. All right. What else is coming up? Uh, Newark Symphony Orchestras on um, April 14th, uh, this Sunday at 3 p.m. The free okay. children's concert, A World mm. of Imagination. Make sure you check that out. Um, it is, I, I, I would love to go meet Tubi the Tuba as they break down a lot. They're going to um, have a lot of songs from different uh, movies, from Star Wars, um, Frozen, oh, uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, fan, um, um, the Fantastic Beasts, and most of all, remember um, the Never Ending the Story. Never ending story. I so remember that movie. Do you really? Oh, gosh, that's an old one, but a classic. <laughs> it's an oldie, but a classic. Oldie, but a but classic. On the list you just, you know, the list of features you you know you just went off on it was really i mean star wars mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i mean iconic right so definitely check out that event i'm sure that's going to be spectacular yeah and it's free know. it's free Excellent. again um one more time with the flyer dennis mm -hmm. it is the newark symphony orchestra uh free children's concert the world of imagination tubi the tuba make sure you check it out this sunday at 3 p.m um it's going to be i think it's going to be fantastic mm -hmm. i should take maddie Yes, Maddie probably would I should take Maddie. really enjoy that. How is yeah. Maddie doing? Maddie is amazing. She hasn't visited us in a while. Well, Maddie, if you, if, and, and, shout and, out to Maddie. I miss her. And a great segue. And if you look around Wilmington, you'll see her on some billboards. Ah! <laughs> I love her. She's on some Maddie's billboards the for um, the Newark um, 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 Eastside um, Charter School. Oh, that's awesome. I said, oh, awesome. wow, my baby. Yeah, look at her. We're all so proud. We're all so proud. We're all so proud. Yes. But, but, um. You you what did you do this weekend? So I had the pageant orientation. Right. I worked at VNM Bistro. Right. <laughs> where I'm always at, and, uh, and I, this, uh, I I have to say something else. Go ahead. So this weekend was the WWE there you go. WrestleMania. There you go. There you okay, go. I'm, I have to admit. Are you a wrestling I'm not, fan? I'm not a I'm not a super fan. I'm not a super fan. I when I was younger, I I watched WrestleMania uh -huh. with my my family and. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't obsessed with it. It was very entertaining, but I wasn't obsessed with it. Okay. But I just remember it being so much fun to watch. Mm -hmm. So this weekend, being that it was held in Philadelphia, mm -hmm. it brought back all the feels. It really it did. It really did. It brought back all the feels because I, I went into it went into this whole imagination of like, oh my goodness, I remember when I used to watch. WrestleMania when I was younger, and it was so much fun and entertaining. It was, it was, but but most of all, um, our own Ty, uh, Ty from <laughs> yes. Ty Talks is here in the building, and he actually participated. He was there. He was Ty, there. Let's go ahead. Ty, oh, tell, Ty. Ty, tell us about tell Ty, us about know, your experience. Um, so the experience was amazing. This was my second WrestleMania. I went to the one in New York. My voice is going a little because I was screaming Saturday and Sunday. Um, this event it was un unbelievable. Um, it's throughout the whole. The thing that people don't know is throughout the whole entire week like it started Thursday at um, the WWE world at the convention center they have basically like comic-con um, but the wrestling version of it um, and then Friday they had Smackdown at Wells Fargo tonight they have Monday Night Raw um, but I went Saturday and Sunday to WrestleMania it was unbelievable I wow, first look at that. Uh, me and my friends we met up and stuff we went to Xfinity Live and we just chilled there and then went inside the stadium it caught me off guard like the stage setup that they have it was unbelievable the wrestlers they did their thing the entrances was probably my favorite part, I would say, just because everybody was singing along to the interest music. They had their own chants. Some of the chants was a little vulgar. Can't say them <laughs> on TV. Just can't do that. But some of the chants were dope, amazing. And then the wrestlers, my favorite part of it was last night. You talked about the nostalgic feels. Um, the Rock, he wrestled on Saturday, but it was like The Rock, John Cena, Undertaker came back on Sunday. Like The Undertaker, his theme music, it hit. And like it's, like, it's like a little doom. And like once it went doom and the lights turned off, everybody just lost their mind. And right, it right. It was unbelievable. Um, but it's Sunday. That's when the whole um, championship happened. But the main thing that people don't talk about, people talk about The Rock, The Undertaker came back and stuff. It was mainly for Cody Rhodes. That was the whole premise of it, for finishing his story, of his story that his dad, who was Dusty 
Rhodes. Right. Uh, one of the great legends of WWE, of wrestling period. He finished his story of finally his whole family having a WWE championship belt, which he won. And then everybody was going crazy. Um, some people cried and stuff. I didn't cry. I was just like, oh, he won. All right, it's cool. I get so but see people crying. It was good. Just, it was dope. All the feels. It really brought back like childhood memories because, you know, you, you like you said, The Rock was there. John Cena was there. The Undertaker. And I actually caught that part of the uh, the segment for The Undertaker arriving. No one saw it coming. There was rumors. I heard there were rumors about it. Right. I had yeah, a few people... uh, super fans that were saying that there were rumors of The Undertaker being there, John Cena being there. Um, but once the, the sound went off, the theme yeah. song for The Undertaker, everybody did lose it. I saw it on... I, I, was I watching need to pull that out. I was watching it on my phone, and I saw it, and I was... Everybody lost it, so I can't imagine what it felt like to be in that stadium in i mean yeah what was the crowd like live. i'm well, sure it was electric the crowd, like, like i said the crowd was crazy like i know that online and stuff because on saturday was freezing like i did not <laughs> expect it saturday literally i had on my coat i lived my hoodie just bundled up and stuff and then people were talking about the crowd like oh it wasn't loud this that, and the third but it just that people were just freezing to death like it was still loud in the stadium but you really couldn't hear it on tv last night was way much warmer and stuff so everybody was into it the crowd was unbelievable it was a good time um, like I said, the chance some of them were a little bit crazy and stuff. But wow. throughout the night, everybody cheering <laughs> on top of their lungs. As you can hear, my voice is kind of gone because I was screaming. <laughs> I was screaming when the Undertaker showed up and stuff. I was, I was cursing a little bit when he came out. I was like, oh, then yeah. But he came out. It was crazy. Um, the one thing that really caught me off guard for some people that do know is called the Money in the Bank of Cash In. Literally a random person, like not a random person, he has a, like a briefcase and he can come in at any time and just choose whatever he wants to, to cash in and win. And once that happened, like his music went off, everybody went crazy. His name is Damian Priest. He's now one of the first um, Puerto Rican um, wrestlers to ever win like the World Heavyweight Championship. He's oh, one wow. of the most common, like common modern day wrestlers to win the championship. He's um, from wow. Puerto Rico. Ty, so. you really, you can tell that you're really passionate about watching WWE Oh yeah, I, yeah, I've been, this I've is been dumb, watching something since I was that kid. is. This is your uh, this is your thing um, because it is truly you know for those that I'm sure everybody knows about WWE and WrestleMania but it's it's storytelling that's essentially yeah. what it is. Yeah, yeah. People say like they say oh wrestling's fake, da, 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 wrestling's fake. But I'm like some of y'all y'all watch TV shows, y'all watch soap operas. That's right. fake, right? It's the it's the same thing. It like literally yep. WrestleMania is the season finale yeah. of the year. That's what it comes oh. down to. And then tonight on Monday Night Raw, which will be in Philly, it's a flip of the page, like a whole new book. It's another chapter, which now it starts a whole brand new season for yeah. WWE. That's what I, it is. So it's forty years, forty seasons of damn. a book. Basically. Forty years. That's forty years. Awesome. Yeah, years. WrestleMania forty. Yep. Forty years, and I'm telling you, I remember WrestleMania when I was growing up. It had. Uh, uh, like you said, Dusty Rhodes, right? You had the Junkyard, Hulk, the right? Hulk, Junkyard right? Dog. No, no, wait. Um, no. Who, 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 am I not the Hulk? Um, not the Hulk. Hulk. Was uh, the first one. Hulk Hogan was out. the main person. Who was it, Ty? Who's Hulk, the, Hogan? Hulk Hogan? That's Hulk Hogan. it. That's it. Hulk Hogan. Yeah. That's yeah. the one. Yeah. yeah. That's the one. I, um, I used to watch it. That era. Right. That, and then say. I stopped. They had, um, remember they had I, a cartoon? Had, remember uh, wrestling had a cartoon? Yes. That, yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah. I, you know, it's. It's something as a childhood that I remember watching, but it was with my, my, my cousins, my older cousins and my uncles. And I remember they were so obsessed with it at the time, but I think I know what happened. Mm -hmm. I think pageant took over. That's, I think what, that's it what happened. I'm that's what it was. The pageant. pageant took over, and I became obsessed with the pageant. But yeah. uh, it seemed like it was a an incredible event that happened in Philadelphia, and uh, we we wish we were there because it looked like so much fun. But Ty, thank you so much for Thanks, you know providing insight and for being there to give us what the experience. <laughs> you know, tell all of our audience and tell us what the experience was like to attend this event. Um, so we appreciate you taking the time to explain that to us. I think Ty no need to keep doing no this, doing like yeah. entertainment. We'll send you because, out yeah. to events. And then yeah, we just want to send you to us. events, man. Yeah, like, yeah, forget we, that. I think hey, that's, yeah, that's yeah. his joy. Yeah. Next year, going to be in, I think, Minneapolis. So if you want to, hey. You okay. Gotta, no, no, no problem. problem. First class, baby. We got you. We got you. Thanks, Ty, again for doing <laughs> that, bro. Thank you. All right. Um, next up, man, we keep it in the, in, the, in the spirit of sports. We have Miss Rachel coming up talking about her HBCU basketball tournament yes. that she's having at the Chase. So let's take a quick commercial break, mm -hmm. right? Did we hit everything? Did I we, think we did. I we, think we, we did. Oh, no. Um, shout out to Larry Moore. Um, Larry Morris. Um, Mr. Morris was um, uh, received at the um, 
city of Wilmington for got an award for just dope guy, dope guy award. Shout out 40 years of service. Shout out wow. to Larry Morris. That, he is just a public figure. He's been doing this um, for decades, centuries even. Mm -hmm. uh, so shout out to Larry Morris. And you can see him, he's giving a speech. He's there with his lovely family. Uh, um, Councilwoman Brigida um, Field, Fields actually gave it to him. He was honored at the city, Wilmington City Council last Thursday. Shout out to you, Mr. Morris, and yes. thanks to you for being the capeless superhero of the week. That's a segment, there and I go. think we're going to stay with that. Okay. All right, we're going to take a quick back, <laughs> quick break. We'll be right back after this message because you don't want to miss this HBCU basketball extravaganza happening at the Chase Center. The Delaware Mortgage Relief Program is still accepting applications. Funding is limited. Apply today. This grant program provides up to $50,000 to qualified Delaware families for eligible housing-related expenses, such as future or delinquent mortgage payments, property taxes, homeowners association fees, or water or sewage fees. Over $20 million has already been dispersed statewide. The Delaware Mortgage Relief Program. Visit online or call 888 303 4324 for more information. I'm asking for 45 more years. I'm asking for my baby girl. I'm asking to see it up and running again. I'm asking for all of us. One in eight men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer in their lifetime. Ask about a prostate screening that can detect cancer when it's most treatable. So you can ask for so much more. Visit HealthyDelaware.org slash prostate or call 211 to learn more. A new beginning, a second chance. Call it what you want, but this is what never giving up looks like. This is what finding someone who believes in you looks like. I thought Goodwill was just a store until a friend told me about Train to Gain through Goodwill's Job Resource Center. After five years away, I had a lot of self-doubt and fear about my future. But Goodwill had my back, and today, I love where I work. They matched me with an employer who believes in second chances, and now I have a new start thanks to Goodwill. To learn more about Goodwill's career development opportunities, call today. You know the why for state-of-the-art fitness centers and amazing pools. But we're so much more. The why is where Delawareans improve their health. Where our communities get stronger. Where everyone belongs. It's where we battle chronic disease. Where cancer survivors restore their mind and body. And weight loss goals become lifelong habits. We are the why. Good for you and good for the community. Good morning, Wilmington. I say good morning, Wilmington. Welcome back. Welcome back. Look, now, if you're in the basketball, this event is for you. You don't want to miss it. May 11th, it's going down at, uh, at HBCU mm -hmm. Basketball. What's it called? Ballin' HBCU? All right, that's my homegirl, Rachel, and she is here to talk about it. She's the founder, the CEO, the creator, the lady behind it, the lady, the coach with the wicked jump shot and the ill post games. What's up, Rachel? How are you doing? Hi, Rachel. Good morning. You know, this is one of my favorite topics. I love talking about sports, uh -huh. especially with you guys. Right, right. And you'll be on the show tonight, the, 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 the sports show tonight, to go dig a little deeper. And I'm excited. I can't wait. All right. Is it? Is it? But the thing about it, you, but the thing about it, you're not just talking, right? You played the game, right? You played, and you coached the game. So was it? You, we got a different perspective here, right? Different perspective, and I even referee, so I have oh, it wow. all around. Worn many yes, hats. Yes. Damn. Mm -hmm. yes. so, and you've been on the show before. I have. So how, how long ago? Was it two years now? About two. Two years. About two. Yeah. I think that's yeah. when I first started. We had you on the show, yeah. and it, it was so great to meet you at that time. And that then when I, I found out you were coming back, I said, this is so, yeah. I mean, perfect and perfect timing. Yes. Because women's basketball it's, has yeah. taken, I mean, the it's media by storm. It is relevant it is it's it here is making uh i mean noise and that's what i love yeah. yes. women's sports but most importantly women's basketball so let's yeah. talk about it sure yes yes well for me like my journey with women's sports it started me playing against my brothers mm -hmm. and that's always challenging because we had we had our own court in the backyard 
Okay. I had to literally fight just to get minutes on my own basketball court in the backyard that I helped create. Right. So it's always been a challenge. And I think that we as women, we always had to fight that. It's been challenging for us just to get time on a court. You mm. know, and anytime we're playing with the guys, we pick up their traits and we, t- we you know, we pick up on their, you know, their their verbiage on the courts, you know, we start talking like the boys. Right. right. You know, that's where right. we get that term time boy. So I think that challenge has really just kind of took flight with these young ladies. And you, you don't have to be considered a tomboy or a little boy to play sports. Right. And I think that, you know, we've displayed that just across America lately. And, you know, they're in the gym. They're not just looking pretty. They're in the gym. Yeah. You know, Caitlin Clark in the gym, Angel right. Reese in the gym. You know, all of these players – they work hard. I've seen Angel Reese play when she was in sixth, seventh grade. Wow. This young lady wow. is talented. She can handle the ball. She can shoot the ball. There's a lot of skill that she didn't portray playing at LSU because she didn't have to. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, she is a guard at six, three, six, four. Yeah. You know, she's really a guard. Right. But she had her as a stretch four. She played the three and the four positions where yeah. Angel Reese, she can do it all. Yeah. She didn't have to display that talent at any in any capacity at, at this level mm-hmm. and she showed out and she yeah. showed out and she showed out and she Just, showed her emotions her yeah. aggressions but, but we're okay. not allowed but as you're women. not allowed uh, right yeah, you know? did i see i did i did catch a commentator you know highlight angel reese's emotions and i i was taken back a little bit i said what's the difference between a a, a male basketball player yeah. mm. showing his emotions because right. that's don't you want a a, an athlete to pour their whole heart yeah. into that game, and they do, and and yeah. that's that's what it's about because it shows true passion, it shows true heart, and they're pouring everything into that game, into what you know they dedicated to, and what we're cheering for, and supporting, and tuning in for. Wouldn't you? It's nice to see those raw emotions because yeah. it shows someone is real and authentic and not fake. And it's a shame that we, we right now in 2024 that we're still having a discussion about you know women showing emotion versus men, right? It's yeah. still versus. Right, like we're not we're not yeah. allowed. Yeah. Right? yeah, pay, yeah. sports, whatever. Mm-hmm. It's still versus, and it's sh- it's a shame. Even when it comes to, and I know we get real political here, and it comes when it comes to women's rights for their own body, right? right? It's still a shame that we are still in this this climate, right. you know. And um, so. But we well, to, I'm gonna put a pin in the net. Go ahead. Right. Go ahead. But, but it's good that we're continuing the conversation. Yeah. Because that's yeah. important to have the conversation, raise awareness, but bring you know bring this positive, shine a positive light onto this. Yeah. That mm-hmm. Angel Reese. I mean, we saw her true, authentic self on the court. And also in front of the cameras during the interview, and I appreciated that yeah. because she it just shows that she's a real person just like yes. anybody else, yeah. mm-hmm. but talented, yeah. talented. But I have to say this: unsung hero <laughs> goes to Dawn Staley. Okay, uh, are we gonna give all the we gonna give all the women that's playing on um, playing mm-hmm. college sports mm-hmm. the credit? Yes, absolutely. Yes, unsung hero Dawn Staley. Yes. What do you think? Dawn Staley have exceeded, you know, like she's exceeded what it means to be a coach. You know, How so? I've seen her coach when she was at Temple. Mm-hmm. I've seen her play. I've seen her act. You know, right. and um, she's just been all around the, the, the sport as a mm-hmm. whole. She came to the sport, which has been, what, three years now? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And she, she's coached with Gino. She's yep. coached with the best. She's humble. Very. And mm. she, yes, she's Very. humble. And she displays her emotions, yeah. you know, on the sideline. She doesn't overdue right. is what we would say right. and um, she coaches her teams emotionally right. physically mentally and we appreciate that we see it and we appreciate it from philly mm-hmm. you know philly you know north philly um, no don't get me in a lie because i'm not sure if it's actually north philly <laughs> but i know she went to dobbins right um because they have their terminology and slang i don't want to get it wrong because right because right. you're you from know? new york I'm right from right new york, and i get beat up for my philly friends you know so <laughs> excuse me philly north philly but you know, Dawn came in with that aggression, mm-hmm. and people love that because you can't. You have to be a dog in yeah. this game. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. that's that's man or woman. You got to be a dog. You got to be a dog. Mm-hmm. Right. You know what I mean? And not those dog little dogs that stay in the house. The dogs that stay outside. You know what right. I mean? Those dogs, mm-hmm. <laughs> those right. dogs are willing to come in and yeah. you know what I mean? Get that time. Yeah. So, and I think Dawn comes and brings that to the game of basketball, especially for women. Right. You know, and they appreciate that. They receive her very well from mm-hmm. all over. Yeah. I think any player would love to play for her. I think so too. It's just that unfortunate. Now. Yeah. She has such like such an amazing, talented team. Yeah. That she can go as far as the last person on the bench, whoever that may be. Yeah. Right. We were talking about that off camera. Yes. That don't don't that um self, they have what two starting lineups. She has two starting championship lineups. Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> you know? a, that's insane. And she's losing three. 
Yeah. You know, and she's bringing in three exceptional players yeah. that I've seen play. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so talent is just going to be in, you know, recycled through South mm -hmm. Carolina's program. So where's women's basketball going after this year? This year, it was phenomenal. Yeah. Oh, yes, right. It was, it was a lot of matchups, mm -hmm. a lot. It, it, it's, it's a lot of a, a, a lot of press, but not enough press. We, mm -hmm. we, we can agree there. But yes. more than usual. More than usual. It, because it was popping up on my network. It yeah. was people that I never thought would be talking about. It. We're talking about the women's basketball. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it was it was something that, first off, it was really great to see. It was really great to see you know women's basketball getting the attention it deserves. I mean, we're breaking barriers as women mm -hmm. daily, mm -hmm. but it was really deserving for them to receive that type of media coverage. Mm -hmm. And I think where I was I was working at the restaurant over the weekend or no last all last week building into the weekend obviously, and I looked over to the televisions behind the bar and I the the basketball game was happening, but they were breaking and the commentators were all sitting at this big long table and it was all female commentators. I saw that. And they were dressed the nines. They looked, I mean, <laughs> like fire. And I just looked over and it caught my attention. I said, now that's what I love to see. I know that's, that's right. what I love to see. We need all women's sports show. We do. It was, it was, do. it was great. It was really <laughs> great. It was, it was so awesome to see that on the television yeah. that yeah. all, I think there was like seven of them at yeah. a long big table. They, I mean, they looked like fire. I yeah. mean, like diverse, every single, yeah, diverse, I mean, diverse panel of yeah. like, just of commentators and they were talking about the game. And it was really neat to see that. Yeah. Women commentating a, a women's basketball game that was getting, getting the attention that it deserved. It really was cre really great to see. And yes. speaking mm -hmm. of women's basketball games that's getting time that they deserve, May 11th. May 11th. Doubleheader. A doubleheader. A girls talk game. To the girls game starts at 4.30 and okay. the boys game is at 7. And May 11th is such a, 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 a monumental day for me because that was the day my father passed away. Mm. So it means a lot to me. Like a lot, everything that I do has some history behind it. Right. You know? right. So my father passed away and it just, you know, kind of inspired me to be better because there's things that he doesn't know about me. I'm sure now in spirit, if you believe in spirits. Right. Um, that, you know, I get to you know, show the world, right? you know, and um, share with the world. Right. So it's, it's emotional. Right. You know? I know. I, I got you. I got you. <laughs> it's so, emotional. So, so this day, May 11th, this very, very special day, right. what, you know, how did you come up with this concept? And, and for the people that are just tuning in, what is the concept for Ball and HBCU? Okay. The Ball and HBCU Premier High School Basketball Showcase is, is not a recruiting showcase. Mm -hmm. it's but you know it's going to be that. It's going mm -hmm. to be that right. because, you know, we recruited some talented athletes okay. from New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Delaware, Maryland, and Texas. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, yeah, we went as far out. That wasn't the intent, but we want to give all kids the opportunity. You know, so the opportunity is for them to spotlight their talent and introduce them to the success and excellence of HBCU institutions, which is historically black colleges and universities. Yeah. I'm from New York. I wasn't aware of HBCUs. Right. And I happened to play in a showcase where the coach from an HBCU sought out my skills, recruited me. We went on a recruiting trip and I was like, you know, HBCU. I didn't know. I st I thought that was the name of the college. Right. You know? Right. Right. I'm going to HBCU. Right. <laughs> you know? Right. right. <laughs> you, know, you know, I was just you know ignorant and didn't know any better. We went down mm. there from New York all the way to Lawrenceville, Virginia. You're mm -hmm. talking about a small town. Mm -hmm. It was a culture shock. We stayed on campus for a couple of nights. We went to go visit other HBCUs, and I was in awe. I fell in love. Mm. Just the the the. The camaraderie, the the family, the unity that they just showed, that poured out with love, it was just un unimaginable. I didn't, I would never thought that I would attend nice. a school that small. It changed your life, won't it? It changed mm -hmm. my life. Yeah, you know, yeah. in in numerous ways. Right. You know, that's another show. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> But um, yeah, that's the, the, the aim is just to spotlight the talent and introduce them to the HBCU culture. How many, how many um, um, players do you have coming? Um, 40. Wow. 40, a little, maybe 42, okay. 40 players. So you got um, May 11th, Chase Field House. Chase Field House. Um, you got two headers. The women start at 4.30 mm -hmm. yes. and the men start at? Seven. Seven. And in between games, we're gonna have shows. So mm -hmm. we're gonna have talented artists, okay. singers, rappers, okay. local and um, out of state. Um, media, local and out of state, from okay. New York, New Jersey, to support nice. the players that they are, uh, mm. in, you know, aware of. Um, this is going to be a phenomenal event. Yeah. A band is going to have inspired. Is going to be inspired by HBCU bands. Wow! Yeah. Amazing. How yeah. do you? How do you? Where do you see this in the next five five years? Rachel? Um, I want to take it 
regionally. Yeah. So I want to do Southwest, uh, Southwest games. Yeah. Uh, Cause I don't want to leave a child behind. Understood. You know, so there's a lot of kids. You have platforms like the, the um, Adidas, Nike, under armor they have their own platforms some right. kids don't get to play right you figure right. there's only five maybe coaches play eight players on the team yeah and that ninth tenth or eleventh player or twelfth player yeah they don't get to play they don't get to play you know they get to wear the shoes and they get to wear the bags but they don't get to play what does the what does that day what can it do for kids mm. that are you know they not just like exposure we know they're going to give exposure but what's it going to do for the kids my Prayer is to hopefully inspire them. Okay. Inspire them to open up their mind to other institutions other than the power fives. Right. You know, um, not everyone is going to get accepted. Not everyone is going to get that look, but you can still. There's a lot of professional athletes that graduated from HBCUs. Mm -hmm. And in turn, it's like, I'm going to have two coaches that are professional, former professional athletes. Ronald Flip Murray, yeah. Ben Wallace. Yeah. They graduated from HBC, HBCU. Yeah. They played and excelled you know, in the, at the professional level. That's right. That's right. I love it. I love it. I love it. I can't wait and to make May 11th. Both of those two players graduated from a Division two CIAA school. Right. So yeah. you don't have to go to the, the Power Five. You don't have to go to a Power Five. All you have to do is work hard. Just work. Work. Right. Just work. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And nowadays, we have social media. You can market yourself. Mm -hmm. That's true. <laughs> Unlike how it was years ago. Uh, so next year, for the people, for the kids that are, that are missing this event, how should they get in contact, follow you, whatever? So they don't. Are you? Is it that you? The selection process, uh, I guess, is where I'm going to going with. You reach out to the kids, or they reach out to you. How does that go? This year, I reached out to them. Okay. No one knew about. Oh, so you you, you you scouted. I'm <laughs> oh, she's like, yeah, okay. I love basketball, uh -huh. and I love to see talented student athletes. I mean, I'm academic first for me. Yeah. So I love student athletes. I ask them, what's their GPA? That's the first thing. Right. You got to be a good student. You got to be a good citizen. You got to be a good student to play, period. Or you're not going to be able to make it to the next level. Mm -hmm. You can't graduate. I mean, you can't go to the pros right. out of high school anymore. You got to be, you gotta be you, one in a million. They don't even allow it They're anymore. They're not allowing it anymore. No. Are you serious? No, 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 no. No. They stopped that? They've been stopped that. Okay, that's how I'm that's how, uh, Damn, LeBron messed but it up for everybody. <laughs> but that goes to show the how they put the importance and the emphasis on education comes yes. first. Right. And I that's mean, we, we spoke about it earlier in the show when uh, Ivan and I attended the Blue Coats game, the Delaware Blue Coats game, and how it was education day. Mm -hmm. And I love that they put education first and highlighted the importance of education and showing the students that, yes, you can achieve your dreams. And if you want to be a professional athlete, but school comes first. Yes. School comes and first. And I love that that the uh, you know basketball always puts education first. Yeah. So it just goes to show that you know, like you said, what's your GPA? That was the first question that came out of your mouth. What's your GPA? And then let's talk. That's right. And and that's okay if the GPA is not where it needs to be because I'm sure just work on that a little bit more. It's not the end, right? Mm -hmm. Just not yet. Not yet, yeah, right? Mm -hmm. And you have time. You have mm -hmm. time. You can get your tutors. You can get help, right? As long as you have the resources around, I you love know. It. And that's what that's what we're we're here to to, to provide for the student athletes. All right, Amazing. I love it. How, where can people follow? You well, get I know more you're active on social media. I yeah. follow her on social media. Yeah, yeah, of course. She'd be working out on social media. Yeah, well, she'd be, she'd you're not like, stopped. She got like 8 million followers. <laughs> yeah, I I thought, well, let's share, share your social media, share how people can follow you, contact you, all, all the above. My personal is Eva underscore preneur, like entrepreneur. And for the Ballin HBCU is Ballin, B A L L I N underscore HBCU. There you go. Dope. Eve, thanks for coming tonight. Make sure you check Eva out here on DETV yes, live at 6.30, I believe, for the DETV. Mm -hmm. What? Oh, buy the tickets. Okay. Let's not forget that. They're like, yo, they're like, Ivan, just buy go. the tickets. Just Look, go. Yeah. Just go. Just go. Where can people find, buy the tickets? Yo, the tickets are on sale now. You can go to Eventbrite. It's a ball in HBCU. At, no, ball in HBCU dot Eventbrite dot com. Okay, you so you, got a, you have... 30 days to get tickets to this days. event. 30, a little bit over 30 days to get tickets mm -hmm. to this event. Good, good. We don't like people coming up, oh, buy your tickets tomorrow. You got 30 wanna, days. I do want to share one thing. I Go have a special, a special um, sponsor is Anne One. I saw that. Yeah, yeah. Put that flyer back up real quick, Dennis. 
And one is the sponsor. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Highlight those sponsors. They but like we what they sponsors. see there. They love it. And um, they are huge supporters. Oh, my gosh. It's amazing what they're doing for the players, mm -hmm. um, just for the community as a whole. I yeah. think that's important because this event is going to bring the community together. It's going to bring <laughs> damn right. you know, sports fans. Oh, my goodness. You figured families, a lot of fun. And just a lot of camar com camaraderie, you know what yeah. I mean? Because it's important. It's important, yeah. especially here in Delaware. Yeah. It's important, you know? I love this place. Uh, yeah, this, 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 you know? this event is going to be amazing for Delaware. Absolutely. Right? absolutely. I, I love it. I wish you nothing but success for thank that. Thank you so much. Good luck thank with you, the Donna. event. Thank and you. thank you thank for you. joining us to share this incredible event with all of our viewers and listeners because mm -hmm. I'm sure there's so many people that are, have a love and passion for basketball that want to come and support. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And I can't wait till next year. Oh. oh, that's going to be amazing. Gonna be, yeah, we're talking about 80 players, four games. Oh, my goodness, yeah. Okay, teams, see, I did that? Teams, teams, teams. Team. Actually, in November, we're working on a game. In oh, November, we're working on a high school, a high school showcase. So it's going to be high school teams. Okay. Excellent. Damn it, Rachel. Yeah, yeah. All right, so make sure you come out, you come <laughs> back, right? And we're going to make sure that we, we, we pump that up as well. Absolutely. All right, but make sure that you get your tickets at get home. Tickets. And where yes. do you get tickets again, Rachel? Eventbrite. Ballinhbcu.eventbrite.com. There you go. Hit the short link and you get your tickets and I will see you there. Um, we <sighs> think Vincenza. Oh, we oh. got to give a shout out. Oh, okay. Who? Brooklyn. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Bernice. Uh. <laughs> Mama. Oh, Your mom's? mom. Mom. Uh, Johanna. Who else? Who else? Um, so I am going to give a shout out to somebody. All right, go ahead. Okay. So my cousin from Italy, Mola di Bari, that's the town that my family is from, he tunes in all the time to watch us, all the way from Italy, Mola di Bari, it's the small town in the region of Puglia, in, uh, obviously in Italy, um, Antonio Pesce, he's my cousin, and nice. I'm giving him a shout out because he truly is dedicated to tuning in. I, it's, I love that, but a shout out to also Brooklyn, because we have Brooklyn here, right? Yeah. We have Brooklyn in the house, Where so you from? a shout out to Brooklyn I'm from family. Well, I was born in Brooklyn, raised in Queens, New York. Okay. okay. There, there you go. go. Brooklyn's See, everywhere. I remember. I remember from our last interview. Right, we, awesome. we love that we we have so many viewers and listeners that tune in from around the mm -hmm. world. Yes. Yeah. And that's what's truly special, what we're doing here in Delaware. I love it. In Wilmington, Delaware. So another great show. And thank you so much yes. for joining us. Thank, thank you, you for having me always. It's thank a pleasure. You. Yes. All right. What else we got? Um, so I do have something to highlight. Okay. I believe DETV <gasps> was... Nominated. Awarded. Yes. It was awarded, yeah. not nominated. It's a lot going on. It's a, it's a lot, lot going, going on. on April so and May. I, I, I caught wind of it on social media. I, I, would, I didn't even realize it that we were nominated, but we were awarded yep. um, a few different recognitions, yep. but one of them was the number one uh -huh. Go ahead, girl. morning <laughs> show Go ahead. in Delaware. Good, Good morning, morning Wilmington. <laughs> Good yes. Morning Wilmington was uh, recognized for being the number one morning show in Delaware. Yeah, super and excited. I mean, wow. That's awesome. Super I didn't work, even know we excited. were nominated. I didn't even, I didn't even, this was so incredible to see, but it was not just Good Morning Wilmington. No, no. What other shows were um, recognized? Let me pull it out real quick because I, I was so like, because I know Matt it's, Ford, our very own Matt Ford from the you know the the news, DETV yep. News. I yep. believe that was also recognized. We got. Let's see. It that was went so to so great, so so great. Uh, so we got seven awards. Um, wow. Um, <laughs> wait a minute. Seven awards. Okay. Third place in special programming. Um, the TV mm -hmm. theater goer, Matt Ford. First place, um, the TV news. Second place, mm -hmm. interview everyday angels. Wow. Um, first place, good morning, Wilmington. Um, uh, first place again, best news broadcast. Wow. Second place, best news broadcast. Third place, best news broadcast. Awesome. We sewed that one up. Amazing. So I'm super Amazing. I had no idea until oh, uh, so I think it was Matt Ford and, and, and Ivan, you posted on social media and I was going, I was on my phone and I was checking and I was like, wait a second. Yeah. We won all these awards. That's you know. Hats and, off to the team at yeah, TV. Most definitely, mm -hmm. definitely. I, I I actually cried. I'm not even gonna lie. I cried, <laughs> and I'll tell you why I cried. I cried because um, five years ago, April first, five years ago, Dennis, myself, and Leo Melick, uh, Dennis Pritchett, Leo Melick, and myself walked in at twelve o'clock midnight to the Lancaster studio, wow. and we fought and heard and went through so much scrutiny about us not having experience, us not knowing what we're doing. Mm. And we went in there, heads down, mm. like, and just, you know, just gave it our all. 
And that story is not just for us, it's for you too. When you feel that you can't, or people are saying that you can't, screw them, screw them, just, just go, just go. And Dennis and I, I, I never seen Dennis emotional, never seen him emotional until last week. And then he was like, Ive, we did it. Oh, and we, we like, oh shoot, we did, we, we did it. So not done yet, though. No, we not hell no. This is <laughs> only no. the beginning. This is the beginning, and I'm happy to be part of this journey yeah. with you yeah. guys. Really, it's been truly yeah. an honor. Mm -hmm. It's been um, just absolute a gift that I've been a part of this journey with you and your team yeah. to see the growth here at DETV, but also to see Good Morning Wilmington blossom. Yeah. Um, thank you for having me mm, along for the me. ride. Don't, don't do that. We're don't not do done that. yet. Do that. I mean, we're not done. Hey, hey, <laughs> Where are the tissues, guys? <laughs> And you know what? And the thing about it is, this I want to give a, a special thank you to everyone that was volunteered, employed mm -hmm. here, whatever. That, that even if even if they're no longer with DETV, right. because mm -hmm. we all gave blood, sweat, and tears. Yes, that's you know. True. And and I have to say thank you. And this award is for all of us, even if you're not here. And I'll make sure that I will scream that to the to the, to the, the the wide ends of the earth. Thank you all. Mm -hmm. Thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting. And don't forget to hit that like, share, subscribe button. That's all right. right. Because we got a lot that we're about to pop off. Exactly. We're going to kick it up a notch. Mm -hmm. All right. DETV, <laughs> your new award-winning television network awesome. and content creation network for the state of Delaware. All right. Signing out. See you tomorrow. Have a great day.